Thank you for your questions. I'd be happy to show you how do I set up my palette. Uh, first of all, I need some kind of container. And my very favorite container that I've used for 30 years at home is a Le Menu TV dinner tray. And this was the little uh, Le Menu TV dinner tray with a plastic cover. And uh, I'm still using the original plastic cover. Uh, a dear painter sent me some new little trays to use because finally I had a split in mine. But uh, 30 years and still going is pretty good timing. This is a purchased one. And I take a piece of paper towel. This is the trifold paper towel from our dispenser here in the studio. And uh, I fold it down to, to fit. I use one paper towel and uh, fold it down to fit. I don't like it to extend out over the edge because, and I just experienced that this weekend, uh, when I go over to load my brush, if my finger touches the wet paper towel and there's paint on it, before I know it, I'm tracking paint on the piece. So I <clears throat> like to have it down where I don't do that. Now I'm going to moisten it with just clear tap water. If your water supply has, um, I think I want to turn this over. If your water supply uh, has a lot of little creatures in it, you might like to use distilled water. Some people, uh, you know, report a lot of uh, problems with mold spores in their water. I think something, though, I should remind you of is, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to keep this palette at least one, two months, maybe longer. Should it get moldy, start to mold, you'll know. You'll know instantly because you'll have a, a, an odor to it. Uh, and there shouldn't be any odor at all. Uh, you need to Clorox that if mold has started. You need to have... Uh, you can use like Clorox cleanup or you can use a little 5% Clorox solution. It needs to be Clorox, both the lid and the container, uh, or else you set it up and there's going to be enough of those mold spores that they will start, you'll start having a problem with mold right away. You need to be careful about that. Now, it's, it's uh, good and wet, uh, but I can tip it and hold it and the water doesn't run off but it's just good and damp if you get too much water when you put your paint on it your paints are going to run every which way now some people like to put their paper towel in and um, have it form ridges and they, they very carefully I need just a little more water here they very carefully well I should do the first make some ridges in here that they can put their paint between the ridges this does keep your paints a little separate. Uh, I don't really have a problem with that. But they, they set their palette up like this. I, what I think is good about that is that you're, you're forming kind of a terrarium effect and you're keeping the moisture up around the edges of your paint. Um, here, where we live, I don't find it so necessary to do that. And I uh, like to load sometimes off my palette 
So this is a more convenient way for me, but you could consider, especially if you live where it's hot and very dry, you could consider something like this. This could even be bunched up for taller effect. Uh, I should have mentioned to you, when making your palette, if you don't have one of these things or a, a good old menu, TV menu tray, um, <coughs> you can get like a Tupperware or a, a plastic sandwich uh, container but turn it upside down. Use the lid to form your, your wet paper towel in. And then take the bottom of it and turn it upside down to cover your paint when you want to uh, go away from your palette for a while or for storage overnight, etc. So now I have a nice, and I kind of push the air pockets out. And now it's ready to place my paint on. Now when it comes time to um, put your paints out, I like to put my paints in rainbow order, red, yellow, greens, blues, purples. And then if I'm thinking about it, I like to put my paints from light value to dark value. So that when I look at my palette, across the top I have my light values of the different hues, I have my medium values, I have my dark values. So I've gone ahead and put out some colors for you to look at um, and I do want to share with you, I've had questions on mixing. Um, there's uh, several ways to mix your paint. Uh, say you want a medium blue. Well off of this palette, I bring down some white. It's helpful to know how strong in tinting strength your blue is. This one happens to be strong. And I, so I've just put a little in there. Now, when you're almost there in value, don't uh, put it in like I did. Just add it a little bit at a time. Until you get it as dark or light as you wish. But if you always go and just put it in like this, you're going to end up with enough paint to paint a bathtub or a battleship as we like to say. So it's much better to put it off to the side and just add a little bit at a time. And then when you have the color you want and you have it to where you like it, mound it up. and store it on your paper towel. I'm just going to mix that up. Pretty, pretty dark value. Well, here. And again, there's not very much there, but let, let me save it. Make sure you wipe your knife. So I'm mixing and saving. The other way of mixing is brush mixing, and uh, I will show you that in another little short. Thank you.